to all uh, our dear friends. It is an honor, more than anything else, it is an honor to introduce today the work of uh, Dr. Mozinha Fernandes. And uh, I would like to begin by the beginning. Uh, many, many years ago, I can't remember how long ago, uh, my dearest friend Alito sent me a, a small film and a link to that I shared with you. Uh, it's on the chat, Amfcom. Uh, and then we had the opportunity to have further uh, talks about, about it. It's on the chat, the first link. And uh, being uh, Alito, such an outstanding scholar and, and su uh, uh, su such a creative yeah. academic, uh, indeed, his project seduced me uh, to, from day one. And uh, to an extent, I've been following it. And then I had the opportunity to meet some of the, the people of the group, especially uh, Favita Dias whom I thank very much for sharing the book, uh, sending me the book. And uh, later on, uh, once there was in Goa, uh, I saw a beautiful film. I sh also shared the link with you. Uh, uh, a beautiful film, film was screened uh, and presented by Dr. Ambika Kanikar at uh, uh, go, uh, the, the College of Architecture of Go University. And the, the, the film uh, is called Amicon, Huawei. And it's based on Vita Zarunkar, a uh, postgraduate of um, Go University. Uh, 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 Vita is a member of the Kumbi tribe. And uh, the film is very moving, very beautiful. And uh, we can observe how Vitae decided to embrace. Sorry? Is it OK? OK. To embrace her roots. And uh, therefore, she, she carried out the project. Uh, uh, to record the oral stories and songs of her tribe. Um, and the, the, all, at, at the same time, the film uh, seeks to explore the mind of, uh, of Vitae in her own words. And it's, it's a beautiful, again, a beautiful and moving film that I would suggest you to, um, to, 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 to watch after, after since I, I shared the link with you for those who have not watched the film. But on the whole, this group uh, is, is a very inspiring one to me, not only academically, not only intellectually, but also ethically speaking. And um, as, as a humanist uh, uh, way of uh, rethinking society even when this society is segregating you and and how you try to uh, build or rebuild a place uh, in your own society despite the fact that you can be segregated so dr mozinha fernandes or mozinha fernandes doesn't need uh, an introduction you all are familiar with her she's currently um an assistant professor of the Department of Sociology of Goa University. And uh, I would like now to mention not only her uh, research as a sociologist and her writings, but also the fact that Mozinha is a great poet. She makes poetry as well. And uh, I, have, I hope that we have the opportunity to um, to know better your poems. So thank you for so many things that you, you are giving us. So before giving the stage to Mozinha, then I will get back to, uh, uh, at the end, shortly, uh, after a presentation, I'd like to underscore the fact that uh, on top of, uh, of offering us uh, important ethnographic data, uh, Mozinha also leads us to think uh, the relationship uh, between memory and society. We know that, we all know that cultural memory preserves the, the store 
of knowledge from which a group deri derives the, what I would say an awareness of its unity, of its singularities, of its peculiarities, of its confl conflict. So, of course, no memory can preserve the past. What's, what remains of that past is uh, what uh, each society uh, in each time can reconstruct within its contemporary framework uh, of, ref of, ref of, sorry, of reference. We know that uh, uh, in the past quarter of the century, more precisely since the, the end of the last century, the, the topic of memory has not only become an increasingly important analytical category for historians, sociologists, anthropologists, cultural theorists, theorists, but it has also become a pervasive in popular culture as well, if we can use the expression popular culture. Just, I would say, as importantly, though, there has also been an increasing acceptance of the notion that the past is no longer the pro province of profession professional historians alone, as it used to be. Uh, indeed, acknowledge, acknowledging the, the, the power or the importance of, soci of soci social memory to me not only provides agency to a community, to a group of people um, to, to understand or to try to understand its, its past, it makes also, it allows that community um, to, uh, uh, to foster conflicting interpretations of the meaning of the past. Indeed, memory can foster any number of social uh, events like solidarity, nostalgia, conflict, uh, and so on. So usually when we think about culture or social memory, we think about Paul Connerton and his two uh, uh, books of reference called How Societies Forget, first uh, and then I'll, sorry the first book was also societies um uh, remember and then later on he wrote another book called our societies uh, societies forget uh, and there is a kind of play between between these two possibilities of course both of them are selective a society selects what is it uh, that society that community that group wants to select and to keep in its, its uh, um, social and cultural memory, but also it chooses uh, what it wants to, to forget. The, the novelty about uh, Mozinha uh, research is about a society, a community that indeed does not, does not uh, choose to remember or to forget the past, but um, denials that past. Uh, Mozinho will allow us to go further in that interpretation, but indeed it's a very interesting uh, perspective and um, I would call it an option, but of course this decision, quote and quote, of denying the past uh, has, has plenty of meanings that I'm sure that between all of us we can explore further, further on. Uh, anyhow, Mozinha, before giving, giving you the stage, I'd like to tell you that your book remind, or sorry, your presentation re remind me a book which I like a lot by Jeffrey Olick. Uh, it's called The Politics of Regret and uh, the subtitle is on, on collective memory and historical uh, responsibility. Uh, he has uh, written a lot uh, on social memory, I would say that he has established himself as one of the world's preeminent sociologists of memory. And uh, one of his uh, important co contributions is that he looks, um, all he looks in this book, he wrote a lot on, on memory, he looks at how catastrophic, terrible pasts, and in this case he analyzed na Nazi Germany, but he also um, uh, talks or in this edited book, his contributors also talk about South Africa, the apartheid uh, and South Africa and the way 
that they are remembered. But he's particularly concerned with the, the role that memory plays in social stru structures under traumatic circumstances. And when um, a society, for one reason or another, decides to remember, to forget, as in the case of uh, uh, the, the research that Mozinha will bring us today to deny uh, a, a specific past. So after uh, this short introduction, I would like to thank again Mozinha for her inspiring um, text. I, I will give her the stage and I think that I, I could go back for a while and then uh, open um, the, 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 the debate, okay? Is it okay like this? Go ahead, Mozinha. Your microphone is muted. You open the mic. Say something, Mozinha. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. Okay. But we don't see your presentation. Is it visible? Uh, yeah. Now is it visible to me? Perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Rosa Maria, for the introduction, and thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, inviting me. And especially, I thank uh, Cielo and uh, Professor Hilda. I'm sorry, I might have pronounced it wrong, mm -hmm. for inviting me and for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to make a presentation on my work. There have all the songs and rituals gone. Uh, so before starting, I would like to um, tell you that uh, I had never thought of researching about my own community. But when I came uh, to study in ME uh, in the Goa University, I met Professor Alito Siguera. And he was the one uh, who inspired me that you could work on your community and at the same time uh, when I was in ME I also got a chance to work uh, with the uh, director Shubha Chaudhary, Dr. Shubha Chaudhary, the director of archives and the research center for ethnomusicology and I uh, with due respect to Professor Alito and with due respect to Dr. Shubha Chaudhary uh, without whose uh, motivation and support this work would have been not possible or I would have been not possible to write my research. Uh, with due respect to them, I start my presentation of where have all the songs and rituals gone. I belong to the Gauda community. Uh, that's the, one of the tribes in Goa, among other tribes like Sumbi and the um, Bindi. Is my, uh, are my slides changing? Yes. Okay. So Gaudas are the tribes of Goa as I said, among others. So today, uh, there are divisions among, the, the Gaudas are divided into three main groups, the Hindu Gaudas, the Christian Gaudas, and the love Hindu Gaudas. Those Gaudas who were converted to Christianity and then again they re got reconverted to Hinduism. So I'm going to talk about only the Christian Gaudas of Ameri in the Salses Taluka in Goa as a case study. Uh, for this presentation. So, uh, the thing when I went uh, on researching as my uh, work demanded from me when I was working as a uh, field research assistant for the archives and the um, research center for ethnomusicology to collect the songs and the traditions about the tribal communities, uh, my work demanded that I should collect songs and practices, rituals from my community also being a, a tribal community. So when I went to the field, I found out that uh, whatever things were happening in my childhood are all disappeared. And uh, at the same time, when I visited the other Gauda ward in Kepe for the same research work, I found that the dances like Dalo are being practiced by the people. So I was in a confusion wherein the, uh, they are the Gaudas, the same tribe, 
at some places they are performing their dance and when i i went to my village i saw that no one was dancing there were no practices or uh, uh, like pugli the dance which used to happen at the time of the ritual uh, of birth are not happening so that's how i began researching on the question like what do people remember of their past and this uh, and through this presentation i will take you through what i found about or uh, from the people when i was researching so this case study is only about uh, one village in ambil where there are three wards of dot the people banda wodi and peda these are the three wards of the gaon where i did my research so uh, when i was researching i went on to find out like from where did the gaudas came to this place so here i'm going to discuss the myth of origin the oral history of ambeli village so when i talked to elder people mostly i uh, took into consideration the elder people here since i wanted to find out the history about uh, the gauda people so the gauda people according to the pe uh, people whom i researched and interviewed they said that gauda people came to ambeli from the place called kadra the kude munis that is the ancient people came from kadra those who settled in this place of ambeli but when i went on researching where this is where this place is located no one knew where it was whatever picture i got of the kadra village was from my parents they said once they had uh, once they were married they were taken to kadra they only described the place as women um dancing on the drum uh, on the beats of drums carrying duly on their head that's the lighted lamp on their head and they told me that they could see a statue from uh, uh, to the place where they went that is in kadra otherwise i i don't have any idea where this kadra place is uh, till today i could not find out whenever i go to visit my village i try to find out from people where this place so that i could visit and find out but till now i'm not been able uh to find out where this place is uh, they say that it is in the forest and uh, now we don't remember where this place and there's some of the people whom i had interviewed for this research they have already uh, passed away and there are like you know no older people to find out from where this place is so that answer uh, i cannot find answer to this so the first uh, one more myth or about the history of origin of the gaudas is that they settled in new ambeli that is one other ward of ambeli um they said they had settled in this ward of new ambeli but the couple um when there was a married couple who could not conceive in that place so they said we migrated to the other ward that is the peda which is now the uh, ward of the gaudas and when they came there uh, she conceived a baby boy who then became the wodiu that is the leader of the village so that's how they consider that place is very important for them because that's the place they got uh, they they got uh, a child then some said that they moved from one of the ward of kondo and zaino these wards are in a veli veli village which is a neighboring village to ambeli but then in veli they had to celebrate a lady of Uh, a feast of a lady of Mysore. It was, uh, and for that feast, uh, they had to pay like an you know, excessive cost of the feast. They could not afford. That's why they said they settled in Peda, Sokobanda, Odir. That these are the three wards which now also the Gaudas are settled. There is one more uh, story which people told me that there were three brothers who came from Kadra, and these are the three brothers who got scattered in the Salset area. One brother settled at Alariche Raj, which means on the mountains of Betu. Other one settled in Veli, and the third settled in Ambeli. And that's why they said there is lot of concentration of the Gaudas 
and we can find gauda people in the places like kumbhavata goinchabata bolear in veli which is a neighboring ward and in ambil okay so this was about the uh, origin and uh, from the oral history now i will move on to the life cycle rituals okay so there are different life cycle rituals uh, can you all get me am i too fast am i clear to you please very clear very nice okay okay thank you uh, so i am going to discuss about the life cycle rituals so there are different life cycle rituals in the gauda community which were practiced earlier so there was ritual during pregnancy so when a uh, woman got pregnant uh, for six almost for six months she was not taken to a doctor but on the seventh month uh, she was taken to her mother's place and that ritual was called as gokad korpak hota to give some medicine to the woman and from there when she was taken um, during the 7th month of pregnancy to her mother's place that time after that she was taken to the doctor so that was one of the uh, rituals which used to happen um, during pregnancy among the gaudas but now this is the uh, at sometimes like people do go to their mother's place for delivery but uh, no one like gives importance to this ritual so much now then there were rituals at the time of birth so when the child was born there was a ritual called sutti it was a kind of celebration sutti is uh, like it's a kind of um, a celebration where people got together on the seventh day after delivering of the child so they came together and they danced pugdi it was all all women came and danced pugdi so there was a ritual here where the maternal grandmother uh, had to come and wait in the balcony of the house and then she entered and all people started uh, dancing the pugdis so at the time of pugdis uh, there was a sweet dish which was prepared for sumodyo mixing uh, wild mints and jaggery with coconut so that was a sweet which was given to everyone uh, when they were dancing uh, but it is said that uh, this sweet could not be given to any pregnant woman or whatever was in terms of these rituals of pregnancy whatever uh, sweets were made they were not supposed to be given to the um, pregnant other pregnant woman because it was considered as not good and on that day it was said that there was a suti mai suti mai means a mother of destiny which came uh, that day and wrote the destiny of the child so this was at the time of birth there was one more rituals ritual called nani nani is a is a there was a bathing pit which was dug in front of the house and after delivery the woman had to have bath in that nani for almost uh, starting with a, like if she delivers a baby from that day she had to have bath in that nani till the 8th day so the 8th day that ritual of nani was performed where children uh, from the village were called for lunch and one girl child she had to remove her clothes except her undergarments and uh, she had to remove the baby which was uh, kept in the winnowing pen and give it hand over uh, the child a baby to the mother after that there was lunch and the uh, mother of the child had to have bath in the nani then the father of the child there was a ritual also for the father of the child he had to take rounds by tying handkerchief the um, he had also had to serve food for their ancestors which was kept in the nani okay so these were some of the rituals at the time of birth then rituals at the time of marriage child marriages when i talk to people and especially women 
they told me child marriages were prevalent at that time so uh, girls were married at the age maybe 11 to 12 years then they were taken to their mother's place till they attained puberty before marriage they didn't even see each other it was only at the time when they came to the church uh, for the wedding ceremony they saw each other and they said like you know almost after the marriage for even for 2 3 years they did, didn't even talk much to their husband it it was according to them so in this uh, ritual of marriage there was one ritual before going to the church there was one called crossing the pit where all things uh, is done for the purpose of the marriage and um, there was a um, uh, what you called as in konkani as randon where three stones are placed and the firewood is uh, lighted and the food is cooked on it so on that there was a pot which was kept so at both places the bride and the groom had to take the pot from that uh, safe those three stones which were kept three times like just keep uh, lift it up and keep it and then they proceeded towards the church so in the church the ceremony uh, was held and then there was a reception um, for reception there were songs which i will come in the other slide coming slide which i am going to talk about the songs which were sung by the community called as the airs that i am going to discuss in the other slide then there was ritual of death so when the person died uh he was given a bath on the mall which was interlaced palm leaf and that mall has to be thrown out only by the wodi the headman of the gauda society so he had the right uh, when the uh, bath to the body is given the dead body he had the right to throw it out nobody else then the woman whose husband had died was called as rand bail Uh, in Konkani, a widow. That time there was a ritual. If, say, for example, um, there is a couple. If the husband dies, the woman, after the death of the husband, after the body is buried, she was taken to the mother's place, where food was kept to her, where a gauda sari was kept to her in the house. So she had to enter the house, mother's house. There was no one. everything was kept ready she had to eat take that sari and come back home so these were some of the death rituals then there was ritual of man man uh, is both a sacred space and an event where all gaudas came together to pray to dance and to sing there were two man sports in the place uh, especially the ward of peda where there were two mans and these two mans belong to a uh, ten families there were two separate groups so this man sports belong to one ten families and the other man sport belong to the other three families so it was specially called as dazananche kopel that means um, a chapel belonging to the 10 families from peda and sukumanda why i call it, call it as a chapel because today uh, there is a man committee uh, committee there is a space of man but on that space there has been a chapel which has been built and you will find uh, like you know today if you go in that area you will not find that space but only the chapel so one chapel uh, belongs to the 10 families from peda and the other ward of gaudas which is sukobanda and the other chapel or the mand space belongs to um, people three families from peda so the odil lit the lamp on the day which was fixed according to the local shaman or gadi so they used to go to the local shaman and gadi and uh, they, the gadi used to give them a date on which uh, the lamp on the mand could be uh lighted without the permission of the gadi or without that date uh, no lamp was lighted on the mand 
there was a coconut it is said that they buried a coconut uh, in the place of man and on top they lighted uh, kept the lamp and that coconut say for example uh, especially in the days of carnival if they have buried this year the one coconut uh, then next year it was said that the coconut had to be removed and had to be eaten that's next year for the carnival so they used to bury like this year and then on the other next year they used to uh, uh, remove it cut it and distribute among the others this, these are the two copels where uh, on the left hand side you will find the Dazanache copel and on the right hand side you will find a copel which belongs to the three families in Peda. So people from the ward gathered at the Mun each night. Uh, they placed five lit candles or lighted candles around the molam. Molam is the lamp and they danced around the light to the beating of drums. This all happened on the man space. Women were not allowed to enter the man space. They could see the performance from far. The holy, uh, so all these rituals of dancing used to happen during, especially during the days of carnival. There is one more important place, religious place, uh, which is the Holy Cross at Baradi which is an important religious place for the community members, not only the Gaudas from Ambeli, but the Gaudas from Veli, that is from the wards of Khumbe Bata, Goinche Bata, Baradi, Betul, whichever Gaudas are there, for them it's a very religious place. Every year during carnival period, all the maid, maid is a procession of people going into groups, beating the drums, singing songs, uh, wearing colorful clothes, men used to dress like women, and then they used to dance, apply colors to each other. So, and they used to uh, dance and sing and go in, in the form of maid. They used to visit, uh, visit this cross, which was Baradi, same in Salsit. So all these people, as I told you from Peda, Kumbhe Bata, Goinche Bata, would visit a cross at Baradi Hill, a place of religious significance. Here they sang songs and the Ladin, and put forth their petitions uh, in front of the God. Now I will move on to some of the songs which are sung by the community members. Uh, during the ritual, uh, that is during the marriage, at the time of reception, there are airs which are sung. They are, these are marriage songs which are sung by women. Women used to scan in lines, like uh, you, you can say the bride's side and the groom side people used to face each other in two different lines and they used to sing this yes, welcoming the uh, bride and the groom. This uh, yes, although I have not written um, uh, this much in detail in my um, the article which has been published in the book of How Porn, when I was researching about uh, in my dissertation, Christian Gaudas, um, Christian Gauda woman culture and imaging Goa, I have done much detailed study about the heirs, uh, where I found that these heirs were heirs which were giving blessings to the bride and the groom, the heirs which gave advice to the bride and the groom, uh, there were heirs which were like, you know, teasing each other, there were even uh, airs which uh, was sung in terms of like fights. There, there used to be sometimes fights used to take place. Say for example, if the bride uh, side woman say that we had come for this marriage, but they had they did not serve us well or so. Like th there are different kinds of uh, through songs they used to give back to each other. So it was found out that that there were like sometimes uh, uh, teasing. And in, in, in terms of like, you know, fights also took place among the community members, not that fight, but in terms of words, which they uh, used to sing, uh, sing for each other. Then there were Pugdi songs, uh, which were sung by women at the time of uh, birth of the child, as I told you, they used to take our 
tumbler in their hand or used to hold each other's hands and then they used to take rounds like the fugdi uh, gale fu fu like these are like you know they used to say fu 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 uh, and then various other song like tambu uh, mani uh, used to say aoge gor mujhe amla ko tandu gale topla ko means uh, she, uh, this woman saying that i am from ambauli village my mother's house is in ambauli village and i have put uh, the uh, rice ready rice uh, to soak to make sannas or some dishes so these kinds of songs were uh, sung at the time of fugdi and there were other various songs there were different songs which were sung at the mand which were sung by men there were kale songs which uh, were dependent on uh, the social situation in the uh, village maybe sometimes these songs were against the landlords like they, uh, it portrayed that uh, the situation of the poor farmers and uh, uh, how the landlords treated them and so on so there were different different uh, kale songs based on the social life of the people which they revealed at the time of the scale performance scale performance is a performance it's it's a, like a drama there are three parts for it three different stories uh, they are called as teen party three plots like different stories for each part and they basically used to happen um, the these three days of carnival before the uh, ash before the ash wednesday before the land season began and uh, kale was performed the performers were from the uh, gauda village and they used to also visit uh, the other gauda villages and they used to perform their kale in front of the houses maybe of the landlord or those people who gave them uh, sponsors uh, they used to perform but previously in kale what i was what i found out was only men took part there were no women but lately women also started taking part in kale and finally the theater uh, you all might be knowing the drama uh, in goa uh, was also there were also songs uh, of theater people gauda people also staged theater in their village and the other villages but now you will find uh, at least in ambeli no gauda people uh, perform this theater or kale but they call other gauda people or other kale from outside the village to perform for them okay now i will move on uh, with uh, some interesting findings which i got uh, from the people as i told you i go i wanted to find out like why uh, what do the people do remember of their past what were the songs of the past so i went and approached uh, people uh, so here i'm going to discuss about remembering and forgetting so although like you know we, we sometimes to remember the things which are very dear to us uh here i thought like people will remember and i'm sure they remember but sometimes they told me that they don't remember anything about and they did not they were very reluctant to talk about the identity the point i said like you know what was uh, what was the past of gaudas what are the practices what were the songs of the gauda community most of the people uh, uh, were very reluctant to tell me about the past so these are some of the responses which i got from the people who my interview uh, so when i went in one of the uh, ward of uh, sokobanda uh, to uh, ask about uh, to interview and i asked my friend marta or one of my friend uh, like i have come like i want to know about the history about the past rituals about the songs of the community um then one of the cousin of my friend he came he said how uh, gaudi nu gaudi ki tumi he said i'm not a gaudi you are gaudis uh, so he said uh, he just uh, although he knows that i know uh, that this community i also belong from the gauda community he said i i don't want to be described like a gauda i'm not a gauda you are gaudas then other response when i said like you know what are the old traditions or the rituals which you can remember from the past uh, one person told me one of the respondent te poili che tuka kitel zai why do you want those old things i do not remember anything and i was not uh, uh, 
I did not get any response from that person. Next is when I approached the godil of the village, the headman, and I know that this headman used to sing songs, and I have seen him from my childhood that he sings for uh, in the procession of maid when the maid visits these uh, chapels. At that time, he sings. So that's why I went to find out like some of the songs from him. He said, "Zantele ani kani zantele ani kantara mundar." Do old people sing songs? But I know that this person is singing songs. But when I went to him, he said, "Like you know, uh, I don't uh, sing songs. That uh, older older people do not sing, or elderly people do not sing songs." One woman said that she is very happy about the rituals of the past, but uh, she said today's sons and their wives ask ask her that why do you have to sit with those old things like kudi. that's why she says that if if those traditions are not wanted by my um, children and they say like you know why i want to sit with it so it's better i do not perform them so she says i like to perform but uh, i'm reluctant to perform because of my because my children and my daughter in law says um, don't sit with those old tradi traditions or dance like kudi uh, some people said uh that uh, and she also mentioned to me that people say that they celebrate baptism after the ch birth child so why should we have the have to perform sutti on the seventh day so some feel that it's simply a waste of their money to perform sutti and then to celebrate baptism of the child so it's better for them they say that we don't perform sutti we will perform the baptism of the child one um, time there was a program at the chapel of ambeli where women of uh, the gauda women had uh, sung some songs that is airs and when they were coming back home after the performance some men uh, from the different castes which is the kadvi community they commented on them saying that avoyo airs monon gelo like these mothers came for the program they sang songs and they went off so they felt that it was very insulting uh, that comment was very insulting for them because uh, we sang songs and no one appreciated us they just said these are you these mothers came so, uh, uh, sang those songs and went there is um, even uh, a um, incident which happened in the village itself where uh, there was a, a feast of feast of the cross and we were performing one program and we had arranged some women to perform the dance uh, from the gauda so one boy from the which i heard from the audience i was also there um, as a coordinator of the program so he said like you know why you all had to perform this dance who performs this kinds of old dances now for the program so these were the reactions from the young gauda boys then there was a young gauda couple who were about to marry and they said we don't want anyone to sing airs for our marriage because it's a uh, very old tradition and it doesn't match when the marriage is happen in the hall so they say like you know now we will perform our marriage uh, in the hall uh, now we are not performing it at the house uh, previously the reception used to happen at the house of the bride and the groom but now it's not happening it have it happens in the posh halls so they say like you know we don't want uh, this traditional airs to be sung there one person said ata uh, ami sudorlya when asked about the tradition they said like you know what you are talking uh, all these olden traditions now everything has changed and now we are civilized we are no more the we are no more the older gaudas to tell you about the rituals and the songs we are civilized now we are not gaudas uh one more person so i'm just going to tell you this incident so koili anka soglya won sokol mun liktale kon ata sogli ek so they said in olden days we were considered as very low caste people but today uh, we are equal uh, because he said first we used to not give dowry to our daughters but now like other caste we give dowry to our daughters our boys also go on sheep like others okay passenger sheep or abroad they earn money like others we are no more working in the field so now we have become like them we are no more gaudas 
uh, we have left according to them they had left their traditional tentuli tentuli is the traditional sari of the gauda people and especially uh, women used to wear this dress they said now we are not wearing the saris we are wearing dresses like other people like other caste people and we are we have become like them so we are no more gauda Uh, other person like the, uh, the response was we have we are civilized and that's why we are not performing uh, any tradition and we are not gauda so when gauda people talk about their past they consider themselves as inferior to others they perceive the other caste people uh, who live in the neighborhood of the gauda wards as being superior and they try to imitate them the gauda people what i was uh, what i found in the in the conclusion was they had already dropped their own traditional customs and they were imitating the custom of others because uh, they see this as being a part of the process of becoming civilized they feel by uh, practicing their own ritual by singing the songs uh, from their community they will be discriminated by others so it is just not about like you know just saying we don't want it but there is deep inside um, the fear of discrimination of if they wear a sari people will come to know that they are uh, the gaudas if they sing here other people will come to know these are gaudas if they perform the rituals other people will say you are gaudas and they will discriminate you uh, so it is not in terms of just uh, imitating the whole uh, other caste but it's just also to keep away themselves from the discrimination which was faced by them uh, at the hands of other caste people they dress like others they want to forget their past to raise their position in the social hierarchy so they see that by imitating the other caste uh, people by dressing like them by becoming like them they will not be rejected their position will be higher in the social hierarchy they will not be discriminated against but in spite of doing all this in spite of uh, leaving all their traditional practices in spite of not singing uh, their traditional songs uh, they have this painful memories of the past of discrimination so that's why uh they have dropped all their traditional practices and uh, imitated the other caste people okay so the experiences of discrimination is rooted in the hearts of gauda people and in reaction to this they forget their own culture and appropriate the culture of other people but even after accepting the other caste caste uh, sorry the culture or uh, the practices or becoming like other caste people they which they perceive as being superior they are still discriminated against so what uh, here this was a case study which i found out in 2018 when i was doing my dissertation but when i went to the field back uh, doing my phd research what i found out was uh, that this uh, i came up with the concept called gaudaization of goa so here today you will find uh, the songs the dress of the gaudas is being portrayed by the state as the uh, culture as the identity of the goan society so on one hand i have seen this society of mine dropping all this traditional um songs and rituals on the other hand what i find today is what is something called as gaudaization of goa where the symbols the icons of the gauda community the dress the tentuli the songs are being portrayed by the state as the culture of goa maybe for a promotion of tourism and so on because these as far as what i see today these are the symbols which are being taken from the gaudas and being portrayed as the culture of the gaudas but here on the other hand you see people dropping their uh, rich cultural heritage uh, because of discrimination 
here finally i have one video uh, uh, in which uh, video in the sense my poem keso paido where i have expressed myself like you know uh, in terms of discrimination which i faced in the community uh, i will just tell you uh, one instant last instant and then I'm, i will go to the video which will be a last part of my presentation it was that like you know we go for our lady uh, that a statue of our lady uh, is been sent in the villages so from gauda wards it goes to the other caste ward or sometimes from other caste ward it comes to the gauda ward so whenever we went with the statue to the other uh, caste people now i don't know sit the situation what is happening this was long back when i did the research so when we went as gaudas we found out that after the prayers uh, the people served the the so called the high caste people served their people first and we were served last so i remember one instance because of this discrimination we didn't even take the sweets or whatever was given by the gaudas because we felt it was an insult for us because when we were standing and then suddenly somebody coming to you and not giving it to you and passing on uh, any sweets to others so uh, we had come my uh, my friends group a group of gaudas we had come without uh, serving ourselves but i don't know now the situation i cannot tell you because i have not um, uh, gone to a lady of uh, for for the rituals of prayers so i'm just going to stop presenting this and i'm going to uh, present the poem of uh, keso paida which is published on youtube okay so please do let me know if you can uh, hear it i will stop presenting this and i'm going to just present uh, the youtube video uh, yes just give me a minute Can you see my screen? No, no. not now. No, you can't see my screen. No, not now. Okay, I'll share it. I think now we'll be able to see you. Can you see it now? It's yeah. coming. It's coming. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just in one minute. Okay, can you see it? I just play it. Yes. yes. Okay. Sir. Can you hear the sound also? Sound? You put your you put your Volume? mic you put your mic next to the speaker, Mozinia. little soft little soft the sound not enough okay. if i remove i don't know whether you will be able to hear now can you hear no no it's sorry Uh, if i put on the headphones i think you can hear the sound otherwise you won't be able to hear it mozina can you put your mic next to the speakers and put the speaker loud just try yes yes i'm trying Can you hear me? The I think I mean video. Yes, I'm fine though. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. I'll start it again. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine though. Ego ji, I'm your world leader. I'm your sublime. I'm your sublime. I'm your sublime. पुंटे आमी जीविता व्यवहार गायल ना जल कैसो फायदो बाबुनी मोगा भूगी तू मोगा मोगा भूगी नू 
तुमगे आम भा भयणी जाल्यार आम तुगे भा भयणी मोडपा सुवातेर आम दुस्मान आनी दुसरो लोक तुम आमक म्हणटाय जाल्यार आम केसो फायदो इगोर जे मीस काबार जातगीर म्हणटाय जेजू काम जे मोदे दोरून एकामेका प्रीतीन हात दिवून पण आम तुम प्रीतीन हात दिवपा वयताय तेन्ना तुम्ही दुसरे वाटेन वळटाय जाल्यार केसो फायदो आम म्हणटाय आम्ही आमच्या पेल्याचो मोग करूंक जाय पेल म्हणल्यार मुगे शेजारी पूण तुम आमगे शेजारी म्हण आम तुमगे घोराक वयताय ते दोना तुमको एकवोट घोडपा वयताय तेन्ना तुम तो एकवोट घोडनाय कित्याक जाल्यार हांव म्हणटा आमी क्रिस्तांव जाऊन आमकां कसलो फायदो so this was uh, a poem which was uh, uh, written by me and then uh, salito helped me to get it recorded and publish get it published on youtube so this was uh, my poem written why because whenever i went uh, as a gauda person to the church i found the reactions i don't know about others this i'm talking for myself um so whenever i found um, sitting in the church which gives a equal platform a christianity which says which gives equal platform to everybody as being christian what i was found that whenever we were uh, giving the sign of peace or giving peace to each other uh, like sometimes uh, people ignored me as as being a gauda like you know they just uh, just just said like this didn't even look at me uh, at the time of christmas what i noticed was like when everybody was uh, wishing each other merry christmas and whenever i approach uh, people of other castes uh, and then you usually kiss on the cheeks like you know you touch the cheeks for cheeks so whenever i went uh, so some people turned like you know whenever i went they they did as if uh, they did not want to uh, wish me some just uh, shake hands with me but while like you know they did not even touch my cheek as if uh, i was very polluting uh which uh, insulted me a lot and that's how i came uh, with this poem where i faced discrimination at the church irrespective of whatever people say of equality whenever uh, there were some programs and uh, accordingly like you know organizing committee there were uh, when i was a catechist and i think almost for 5 years i have uh, taught catechism uh, which i have not mentioned uh, maybe in the text so these are my experiences i will just like in few minutes to share it with you uh, so whenever uh, as in the catechism group with other caste members uh, whenever there were dramas happening and at night we were in organizing committee we had to hold uh, the chairs we had to clean the place after the drama i, I will always found uh, the people from the high caste always uh, like you know uh, commanding me and uh, those who are out us like you know mozina please clean uh, whatever is there on the floor and actually everybody are supposed to do it so if if any dirty garbage anything was there uh, i i and my group were told like you know would you not please pick it up and they were just standing and seeing so that's how i i felt it like for 5 years i i experienced this and due to some uh, other responsibilities and because of also because of discrimination and my other responsibilities uh, where i could not uh, go for catechism classes Uh, like to take the classes i dropped the idea and i usually uh, do not go now i i might go to church uh, but uh, i still do remember those kinds of uh, painful memories which are there in my mind when i was there in the as an active member of the church so whenever i was told uh, in in a group like you know you get um, members uh, for a christmas party to make tea so it was in organizing committee your ward wise you had to get some members so some people told me mozina you don't get all the village village people here as if like you know they have a preconceived notion that gaudas will come and drink their tea so then i i try to express myself i said you tell me how many people to bring i will come if you if you are bringing two people from your ward i will bring two people it's not that i will come with the village so uh, village all village people so they always have this uh, uh what do you say this kind of uh, pre conceived notion that gaudas will come they will eat uh they sometimes like it didn't even call us for our lady they say that 
you gauda people will come and finish off all our sweets uh, uh in the maybe at at the place wherever the function is happening uh then um, there was uh, one more instance where uh, i with my along with the people since i was an uh, active member of the church uh in in our ward i had uh, fought for like you know they had said that our lady uh, one year they said they are going to give us our lady from a particular ward otherwise they used to give us our lady only in the rainy season because in the rainy season at our place like you know all water be there it's very uh, what do you say chikad mushy it becomes and it becomes difficult for us like you know to move in the rainy season now at least it is better because the gaudas believe it's a lower lower lying area where water gets accumulated faster so they had told us like okay this time we are not going to give you our lady in the rainy season but and uh, and the summer season and then uh, suddenly they like you know change the plan so i was the one like you know to approach the priest along with my people and the other contraria members then they said are you the priest then they insulted me our people don't come with all your religious people uh, so but ultimately it got changed uh, we like you can say we got whatever we wanted and then they had to so even they said like you know uh, they put allegations on me saying that i have said that we are not going to uh, we are going to um, not come to church and take the statue actually I, which i did not do so there are various other things uh, which I, i don't know now because i don't visit the church much uh, now and i i, I don't have uh, a feel like how how it it is like but surely whatever experiences whenever i go i do write uh, and this was one of my expression uh, of discrimination which i faced uh, in the church so thank you very much uh, for your patient uh, listening thank you so much uh if you have want to ask me anything and yeah. I have a few yeah. comments but uh, I I would rather we give the stage to our colleagues if they already talk Can I Can I go Frederick 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 wants to say something Some some so, someone else wants to say it it's fine no no issues yeah. I'll wait Go ahead, go ahead, Frederick. Okay, fine. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, I learnt a lot. A uh, few questions, few questions, clarifications, clarifications. Yes. Uh, uh, some of the things you described are also overlapping with other communities of Goa. So I don't know how much of it is geographical. Just one or two small things. That Dazan concept, Dazan, where the yes, ten, yes. ten, ten village elders form a committee, form a kind of uh, deciding committee. You know, so that is one thing. which goes outside the gauda community also and these are just clarifications and that uh, sutti sotvi rat the sixth night it also overlaps with other communities right the the practice of uh, the child's fate a newborn child fate being decided on the sixth night in fact that full novel the sixth night by Sil- silviano barbosa is based on that uh, but it's more of a salsa thing than a badde thing i have not come across it too much here i've come across it in literature and those kind of things so I was just wondering. That's my only uh, query. A uh, few other questions. See this uh, full Gauda belt. No, I have not been able to understand where exactly it lies and why it lies in that direction. If it is, if I am not wrong, it's mostly a Salset Ponda continuum, which doesn't reach Badde's. Maybe it reaches Kankon in another form. I am just asking questions because I have not understood that. Uh, that is one thing. The Gauda belt. secondly the full issue of land and displacement of gaudas in goa which has been discussed very well by anita haladi but that's a very old paper you know yeah. where she talks about them being pushed out of the of the more fertile areas to the hilly areas and then being pushed out a second time round when the development like goa university and uh, uh, gmc and all the big projects went to the hills so yeah. so so I'm so i'll just just give me one minute more i'll finish yeah. then uh, then then the third question whether any dna studies have been conducted just to understand the full uh, caste race thing in context in wider context no because there's a full 
confusion over how many people, how much percent of the Gauda population, of the Goan population is Gauda. And until we get these numbers, even any claims that you make will not be able to, will always be shot down quite, quite easily, you know. Then the issue of land rights, you know, like say in places like Australia and North America, they are always acknowledging the traditional owners of their land. What is your thought on this, whether it, it is tokenism or whether whether even that acknowledgement has some kind of meaning uh, in, in terms of, you know, setting the agenda in a long, in a long term thing, in a long term process. Uh, of course, the full debate of relationship with Christianity, that is another area which needs to be understood and it is a complex area. And 40 years back as a youngster, I went through the same process which you went through. In my case, it was not caste, but it was class because we came from a poorer family. And the same kind of discrimination, but of course, I agree, caste is of a very more intense kind. But class, you can you can move in and move out of, you know. So, so, so that relationship with Christianity, that's another another issue which is waiting to be understood. Then the the other issue, which <laughs> I'm asking you too many questions, but this full relationship of the Gauda community or the tribal community, Aboriginal community in Goa with Portuguese rule, whether it gained, whether it lost out, because you know people like Anjali Arundekar are arguing that the lower caste may have actually gained in some cases, I am not saying uniformly, from certain aspects of colonial rule. This is similar to what Ambedkar is arguing in, in another context. And, uh, and, and, yeah, and basically you said that now you all are taking to giving dowry. That means you all had a bride price earlier before. Is that? Uh, no, Sorry, um, oh, finish, 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 finish. See, about the bride price, nothing was mentioned to me. Okay. Uh, they only said, the dowry was not given because they could not afford it. But you all didn't have a bride price? I'm just no, asking because not, many... Nothing many, has been okay. mentioned about the people okay. as far as when I was researching about the bride price. They said like, you know, like others, now we give dowry. That means they were not giving dowry in the past. The other questions you may or may not answer, they are just observations and, and kind of yeah. doubts which I have. Whichever you feel like answering, you yes, can answer at any stage. Answer, at I any stage, answer. at any stage with the others or whatever. I don't want to uh, derail your discussion yeah. otherwise. No, thank no, you, no thank you. Uh, see, about land rights, uh, I have also mentioned uh, something about uh, the Adariche rights uh, that is the, on the mountains. What used to happen is the people from the Gaudas at this place, they used to go and cultivate on the hills of the Betul. But now this place has been uh, that ONGC, oil and natural gas, that has been um, the place where the Gaudas were there. It has been occupied by the government and still uh, people are fighting for it. Now also, uh, like the Gauda people, some of them, uh, they will be putting a case because the government is encroaching on their land there. So uh, there was a meeting, I think last week, I was not there, my father had attended uh, and he had told me, like they had told like if you want to fight the case, you are the one who are going to pay, uh, you have to pay the lawyer and you have to go attend the sessions, uh, hearings in the court. So my father said I am not going to go because I don't know anything about this and I won't be able to uh, do it. So still there, there about the land right, some land uh, which the people used to go on the mountain and they used to stay there in the rainy season because uh, they used to grow paddy there and other things with their animals they went there. So this is still happening and there is a fight which is going on still. Uh, as far as Suti, uh, you mentioned that it's also in other caste. Uh, what I meant, why was it unique to me was because it was not happening in the other, among the other caste which were there in Amri which it, it was only happening among the Gaudas. Um, you might say the role of Portuguese, uh, I would say that uh, with the, like, you know, first the Gauda women were not wearing the blouse, they were just wearing the kapod. Okay, so when, uh, when they, these were the decrees which were passed by the Portuguese to ban this, and especially in terms of uh, the process of conversion, they said like you are no, you are not, you are supposed to put the choli or the, uh, or the blouse. So in in that uh, times, like the Gauda woman used to not wear. So that pattern of dressing, uh, wearing a blouse, came because of the law which was passed by the Portuguese. 
other things i'm not went into detail with uh, what you have asked me about the uh, portuguese rules how how is it in, impacted the gouda community but yes i will surely look upon it it's a very interesting question to uh, look at this but i have not uh, gone into detail with this question uh, yeah these are uh, some of the things which i would like to uh, Thank tell you sir Uh, okay one more thing you said like it is uh, you you said one point you also faced uh, it was in terms of class but in in terms of caste also it is very difficult sir uh, to get out of a particular uh, no i agree i because, agree yeah because see whenever uh, i talk in the language say are to guess ha like this if i say uh, and i i talk in that dialect of uh, konkani the moment i talk people will come to know that i am a god even uh, like you know it is uh, like a notion like anybody shouts people have this preconceived notion about the gowders if anybody shout they say like you are shouting like a god or all 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 uh, all those things <coughs> but it, it has been very difficult like you know to uh, not to show people that you are a gowda you are doing certain things but still you are being recognized even though now i wear maybe uh, a kurta uh, but still to people uh, although i'm not wearing the traditional dentuli but still people will know that she is a gowda when i dress maybe like others also people uh, people have problem they say like you know you are a gowda are you supposed uh, means they give me the uh, through the looks i can feel that are you Oh, how come you have worn such a nice dress? Or because they feel that gaudas uh, are, should be the stereotypical that these are gaudas. So there are certain many many uh, stereotyping about the community also. Thank you, sir, for your question. You. I hope I have clarified. Yes, yes, fine. 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 Yeah. Well, since I'm moderating the session, I don't know how long do we still have. Uh, elder or and Celito, um, I don't know if I can make a few comments or ask. You are sure. Yeah, you go ahead, Professor Maria. Okay. So, moving. Uh, uh, I when I I introduced your 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 presentation, I was talking about social memory and uh, cultural memory to one, and um, and I was. Suggesting a kind of denial of the past, of the, well, memory related to the past. But there are a few things that I'd like to comment uh, with you. One is that uh, I won't have time to develop, but you offered a very rich and interesting ethnography, ethnographic data, namely the cosmogony of the Gauras and uh, um, the different rites from pregnancy to death. including birth and uh, and um, marriage which is common to many other, I wouldn't say tribes but I'm not as familiar with tribes as I am with caste but with other castes I mean usually a caste has a cosmogony and of course goes through all these life cycles which even though uh, we didn't go uh, deeper uh, of course for like a, a space Uh, I, I would suggest that you, you could go because you are talking about a very rich ethnographic um, background. Now, my question is um, is about the role of the church. Because uh, uh, nearby your village, uh, I, I, I supervised the PhD by Claudia uh, uh, Pereira. I don't know if you are familiar with her about mm -hmm. the garden. And indeed, the Gaure, uh, the Ga the we we do she start working. They start well. They they had songs and the dances, and more than that, they they came to, to the public arena. They start not only singing but also dancing. Of course, there was some folklorization of their culture since they were also dancing at a certain st uh, time for tourists. So we have. Very close by to different attitudes. In one case, and she worked also with Hindu Gaures, a Gaura. Uh, in one case, dance came as a, a statement, a social statement, or a a a a, a, a form 
of, uh, uh, of um, developing a, a specific identity, if I can say so, through music, through dance. And nearby, you have a community of Christians, of, of Gara Christians, who um, stop singing and dancing. Now, the, my first comment is not it's for, to think, because it, it requires quite a lot of thinking, is what could be the, the role played by the church? Because, as you mentioned, nowadays people uh, tend to uh, either ignore their previous rights and go by the church, or even uh, by the Catholic rights. You, you, you gave a, an interesting example why go through all these when then we have to have baptism and so forth and so forth. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm wondering what could be the role played by the church at repress, uh, repress, re, uh, suppressing uh, cultural traditions that they would not only fit within the, the framework of the Catholic uh, Church, but more than that would, be, would co constitute the threat to them. So this is one comment. The other one, and I really would suggest that you go deeper in your ethnography, which is very, very interesting, is about uh, social stigma, social stereotyping. Uh, so, if uh, uh, during your presentation and now during your deba our debate, you have mentioned how uh, it is so difficult to get rid of uh, a Gaura identity, uh, even if you dress differently, if you sing, if you write poems, if you are as you are a scholar, an academic. So. Uh, long ago, I, I wrote about memory and uh, about the, the Dal Dal group of Dalits, and I mentioned indeed that uh, social memory dies hard. I, I don't think I was quite creative. Um, I'm sure that many other anthropologists uh, identified the same problem, or not only anthropologists, sociologists. And so this is to say that uh, in, in, in uh, different parts where regarding caste, people abandon their previous rituals or their previous um, profession, the social stigma was still there. That uh, would lead us to, again, our dearest friend and your mentor, Professor Alito Sikaira. Uh, it is about uh, rethinking, not of course the social structure, but the social role that can be played by subaltern groups at asserting their voice, uh, at reaffirming their social position, um, at decentering um, dominant, not only of course epistemologies, but dominant preconcepts and preconstructions. And I think that that's where the, 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 the path would be to me. Um, so I, I don't want to keep uh, the debate longer and to keep all our, um, our colleagues silent. I'm sure they have other questions, but I, I would have many comments and we can continue our conversation later, either in person or virtually. I would uh, really um, ask you to, to go further. You have, you are, you, before you, it's a rich ethnography. Um, and uh, again, uh, it's not by <coughs> curbing yourself to, uh, before the stigma, it's about to impose your voice uh, and the, the Gaura voice uh, rather than being uh, voiceless in deconstructing. Uh, a stigma which many times does not correspond to the, the social reality. But thank you so much, Mozinha. And uh, yeah, we'll talk soon, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I hope to go to, to India soon. But um, yeah, but I think that the church can play a role. And sorry, just to finish, and uh, uh, I remember that when I first went to Gujarat, I couldn't speak Gujarati to my first uh, to work for my PhD thesis because I was supposed to go to Bihar and then I had studied Bihari, which is a different language, as you know. Uh, so in the first 
period of my field work, I had to have an interpreter. And my interpreter was an old man. He was uh, a Dali converted to Catholicism. So when I would meet him in Ahmedabad, not that, that I would go to the church, but he was always very um, insistent of taking me to the church. He would attend the mass. He had been back the baptized. But when we were in the village, living with the Vankar, with Dalits, and he was a Dalit himself, in the Vankar, he was falling with great enthusiasm, not only, of course, the dress code, the food, but also the, the, the rituals. So, of course, the church plays a role here, which would be interesting to uh, observe. Uh, and, as I said, um, stigma, uh, we should not uh, conform ourselves to stigma, we should fight stigma and stigmatization. And it goes, uh, of course, through uh, what Alito uh, tried so hard to, to, to inspire, to have uh, subaltern groups having their voice heard and respected, of course. Thank you for uh, the insights. And I would like to answer one of your questions, the role played by the church. I have not mentioned it in my, my presentation, but what I was, uh, what I found out was uh, the role played by the church was in, uh, in abolishing the traditional practices of the Gaudas. Uh, the priest at that time, they said that if you are lighting a duly, on the mind. That means you are praying to evil. That is Kudde and Devachi Puja Karta. Like that means you are doing uh, because in the commandment it says you, you can bow only at one God. And then uh, uh, the priest said that uh, if you are lighting a Tuli uh, or dancing on the mind, it is, it is like a prayer to the evil which is not in our religion. So that's why like people from Peda uh, had thrown their Maulam in River Sal. Uh, and, the, and the nearby village. And there is one more thing which I found in, in my PhD work when I was doing. Some women said it was the nuns, Christian nuns. Uh, they sometimes motivated them to perform their dance, traditional dance. And they were the ones who took them to Bombay and certain convents to perform their dance. So it is uh, somewhere like when we say church, uh, most probably it has done wrong to the tradition by saying it's a even practice and that's why people have stopped uh, doing uh, the rituals. But apart from that, I'm not born into detail uh, with, uh, but surely I will look at the things like what you have uh, suggested. Thank you so much. Kushila, go ahead. Yes. Ma'am yes. Kushila? Yeah. Yes. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I don't want to raise your hopes, but uh, the, the hidden village that you talk about is Azra, uh, most likely is in Maharashtra, Azra. Okay. I, uh, there is a girl in my college who is from Azra. So from Azra? Okay. Yes. And since you say that your parents did actually visit it, but um, in public memory it has been erased, uh, I feel over 90% that uh, it is this village which is being pronounced as Azra by the community and therefore the location and geography uh, definitely can be placed since you are so passionate about placing it. Okay. Yes. And uh, maybe, uh, uh, see, I, I would like to tell everybody here that I am from Bailey and uh, I am married in Bailey. And uh, it was uh, so lovely to hear Mausina talking about um, all the things which you never read in the books, but um, you need to experience them to tell the story. So, um, thank you, Mausina, for enlightening me. I'm sure we'll have a good in the future. Yes, thank you, ma'am. I will surely ask some people now. Uh, uh, is it like, is it Ozra? Because most of them say it's Kazra, Kazra, and no one knows. Still, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find out still from the old people. 
they are saying it was for us now who will take you there we don't know how we went but they said like we went and we went walking uh, so might be might be thank you so much ma'am for uh, this insight yeah thank you any other suggestion any other comments doubt which i a uh, question rather uh, quick some comments yes sir okay i'll just check i'll just check uh, about the cds yeah what cds are you talking about fredo gujarat tamil nadu no no yeah yeah see the the, the karnataka cd cds no Uh, uh because this is yeah. of gujarat so i am the yeah. origin in eastern africa more specifically right. in zanzibar right right doctor but but uh, uh karnataka till a few years back when one of our researchers went there uh, charles kamara who wa- was and is in sweden but now no longer working on them they didn't have a clue of uh, where they had come from and then slowly things started falling into place and they got highly researched and there are some videos many videos and all done on them you know but that is in the last 20 or 30 years maybe yeah because mark pinto who said is a supervisor on the cities of karnataka um they also claim that they have uh, northern karnataka that they have come from from africa they have an african origin yeah it depends on the cities of course yeah <laughs> can i ask Yes. yes. Mozinya, I want I loved your presentation like all of us here and thank you for being here today. Uh Mozinya, just a question. Uh, yes. What about how was your book uh, Hong Kong received in Goa? And what about the Gauda people? Have they had access to it? Uh see, Gauda people, if you tell them like anything uh, or that you are Gauda the younger generation uh, they are very reluctant uh, they will they will say that what 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 are you talking about discrimination so i i can say they they are not at all like you know conscious about although they are conscious about this kind of discrimination but still they deny they say like you know now we go to the church we are new to it um they will uh, they say like you know who sees all all those so they they never come out with this kind of discrimination if i if i was just yeah so in terms of who could know have, have they read the book no 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 and what about the rest of the people in goa how much has your book circulated in goa see there uh, it has been see i also don't know how many because there were copies which were given I think Mr. Frederick, are you here? Yeah, 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 yeah. See, you know, I was making that point that uh, in Goa we are not a great reading society. Uh, on the other hand, the yeah. book the book has got a fair amount of notice. Uh, you know, th- all those who were interested took uh, took it very seriously. The launch of the book uh, went on for three and a half hours, three hours forty five minutes. We have never had such a such a book release ever. in the past but have there been reviews of yes, the book yes uh, 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 the newspapers have written uh, newspapers. quite extensively on it not reviews not reviews but uh, feature articles interviews excerpts all those kind of things have happened so uh, those who don't want to discuss the issue will of course not discuss it so that is the significant section of the population uh, but uh, the 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 you know it is on the agenda in that sense mm. i think i think a lot more needs to be done no doubt and and many more books need to come out because uh, if i could count i was just thinking before the session hardly 3 or 4 of our books out of 150 might touch on this uh, subject which is about 12 12% of the population uh, mozinia 12 or 15 yeah. something like that so hardly 3 or 4 books we have uh, you know dealing including cyril fernandes uh, yours okay uh, yeah and uh, yeah the article 2 of mine and uh, cyril fernandes yes they yes yes book. so there are not there's not enough uh, writing there's not that. enough writing on this there's not enough writing and they did write in uh, in uh, the konkani marathi that's true that's, that's true yeah otherwise there are no and if i think like if it is read by the other caste now they will so they will deny uh, there might be like even 
uh, I don't know whether they will, they will even they will be abused. No, it will uh, be it, it it will come hard to deny because uh, if it is well documented, you know, of course, those yes. who want to deny will always. So then they will say like you know uh, how how can she write about uh, this thing? Uh, they will they will of course deny it. Although everyone knows that this is happening, but then they will they will surely deny it and they will say that you are spoiling the name of our village and so. But the debate has taken place in all other parts of so, India. Goa is lagging behind in yes, that sense. Yes, Goa is just lagging behind. Yes, correct. You are correct. Well, we, we have published here an article on uh, Monsignor's, yeah. uh, Priyanka, and Savita's narrative. Yes. I just want to know how does it uh, how does it uh, compare to race in Brazil? How does this debate compare to race in Brazil, for instance? Elder, él está preguntando cómo se compara con el racismo en Brasil. It's very hard to compare this, <laughs> but uh, it's similar, I think so. It's not so far, uh, but I. But I think the contests are really the contests are really different. Uh, so I don't know if I can ex develop it, it in English. <laughs> in Portuguese I could, but in English I don't know. Um, but uh, you you have another problem. Your time is finished. I'm <laughs> sorry, people, <laughs> because <laughs> we we have a deal here to. So the, the meeting uh, has one hour and a half, and it, uh, it's finished, I'm sorry, Mozilla. And I, I love it, really, your presentation. I didn't make questions because I'm not an apologist. <laughs> For me, it's a little difficult to, to ask something like that. But, uh, but you can, yeah. you can surely yeah. suggest or can ask me questions or any clarification, make some suggestions. It will be very uh, helpful for me. Okay. Uh, and uh, but I think I, I asked to Rosa to finish the the, the meeting. Rosa, if you can. <laughs> so, I think thank, thank you. you so much, Mozinha. And uh, for your the, the role that you have played not only uh, as a Gaura amongst your community but also as a scholar. And my best suggestion is that, uh, as I mentioned, as already mentioned, that you should go further and should <coughs> not give up despite the stereotypes, the stigmas, because what we, you uh, what you mentioned is that there is a new generation in a process of mimic um, mimetism of, of uh, which is uh, has no way out uh, as long as even their voices are not heard and of course to me it's not by um, a mimic process that you 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 get a, a better status or a, a, or your status is acknowledged there are other ways, and you are contributing a lot, as well as your other colleagues from not only from the, the book, but from your group, uh, trying to make your voices heard and contributing as an, a scholar to not only a better knowledge of the Gaura community, but the crucial topics that are common to so many societies like discrimination, uh, social segregation, stereotyping, stigmatization. So uh, I think we should maybe one uh, in our meetings, if our boss agrees, also to uh, to invite one of uh, uh, of the other. Maybe we could even we could even uh, see the movie together and have a debate on the movie, which is beautiful. And maybe Mozinha could read some of her poems. We could have a session that would uh, congregate all of us around uh, a little bit and yeah. so forth and uh, we go to debate. <laughs> okay, it's great. 
But the movie is beautiful, isn't it, Claudine? Uh, okay, something, someone said something like that. And maybe one of us could write a review about the book that would not be only a newspaper review, but an academic um, text. I'd love to. I, I just want to read the book. I will see if I can get one from Leonard Fernandez. Through Leonard. Leonard. Uh, yes, Cielo. I can, I can send you my book, uh, Cielo. It's, it's, uh, I wrote a lot of it, but it's uh, with a pencil. I took many notes, but I can, I can post it to you if you want to write a review. Ah, here Frederick is saying that there are soft copies soft too. Copies. Ah, I'd love to, Frederick. We all here would like to have it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rosa Maria. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, everyone, for giving me this opportunity, uh, especially uh, Sir Hilder and uh, uh, Ma'am Cielo for inviting me and giving me this opportunity on this platform to express my views and to make a presentation about my research. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We thank you. We thank, thank you. you a lot. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, we need to finish, people. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, Bye. 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 Yeah, we come back next. We see you again. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.